Hi, this is Jeremy Kellett, director of recruiting here at Oakley Trucking, and I'm your host for this podcast. This is episode 41. So today, uh, we are going to have a couple of different segments going on today. One, we're going to talk with Randy Rimel about pre-trip inspections and how to do a correct pre-trip inspection, something that is uh, well overlooked, and we're going to get in detail with that. And then also, we're going to touch with Randy a little bit about his last day at Oakley Trucking, which is today. And he is retiring and going to, uh, he's put in, I think, 12 years with us and is looking forward to retirement. So we're going to visit with him a little bit about that. Uh, but first, as always, let's check in with Vicki Chastain on this week's Need to Know. A commercial truck uses on average 20,000 gallons of fuel per year. Fuel is your biggest expense as a truck driver. So it is important that you take advantage of Oakley's fuel discount program. These daily discounts vary by location and are reflected on your settlement each week. If you have any questions about what the discounts are or any issues getting the fuel discounts, call the recruiting department for assistance. I'm Vicki Chastain and that's this week's Need to Know segment. So um, I want to talk to the audience first here for just a minute uh, before we get started, Randy. Um, we got a lot of good things coming up in 2021. I am so excited about 2021. Mm-hmm. You know, 2020 is behind us. We're moving on. This is uh, uh, the first episode to the Oakley podcast for 2021. And, man, we've got some good ones in the works, along with this one being the first one with you. But we've got some, uh, you know, real good ones that we're working on. We're going to have – uh, one of the good ones I want y'all to listen to is the going from company driver to owner operator. That's going to be a good episode that we're going to do, uh, and that's coming up probably the next. We've also got one that in the works of talking to an actual DOT officer. He's going to come in and visit with us, and we're going to we're going to have a good visit with him. I'm looking forward to all those questions and and listen to what he's got to say about truck drivers. So, good stuff coming in 2021. Be sure and and share this with everybody you know because once again this is a way that we're going to communicate with our owner operators this year and it's going to help so we need you to share with everybody uh, tell everybody about the podcast and give us some feedback on things you want to hear too so all right without further ado let's get started with mr randy rima what's going on randy not a whole lot i'm glad that you mentioned that the um, uh, podcast though because i get a lot of phone calls and people the drivers mention the podcast Hey, I heard this on the podcast the other day, and and tell me a little bit more about this or that. So, the podcasts are really good. The ah, that's good to know. I didn't know that. They enjoy that. They really do, and and it causes a little curiosity out of them. So they ask questions, but then that's how we all learn things. That's exactly right. So uh, I was glad to hear you say that. Um, but the podcasts really are helpful. I think the owner operators really enjoy it. Good, good. Well, I I appreciate that and glad to hear it. But you know. <clears throat> Pre-trip inspections we, we uh, mm-hmm. are a lot more important than what I think a lot of people think they are. Oh, absolutely. Yes. We had a good conversation with Vic Beta this morning. He is one of our professional owner-operators, been with us 10-plus plus. years, mm-hmm. and does things right. He's just a, a fine man and does a good job. But he had a lot of input on these pre-trip inspections that made me realize I didn't realize all that went into a pre-trip inspection. And then you were, you were chiming in with it too. So, if you would give us a, give give us what you think a good pre-trip inspection ought to be like, and and help our owner operators to do a better job of pre-trips. Right. Well, <clears throat> of course, the bottom line, the whole purpose for the thing is, is to make sure that that piece of equipment is actually road ready. In other words, it, it is in good condition. It's it's ready to go to work. Uh, look for leaks underneath it. Uh, first indication, if you got a puddle of green stuff underneath your truck, and it's like, where'd that come from? Something wrong. Yeah, something's wrong with it, you know. And so those visual inspections that we do, and that's pretty much what that pre-trip inspection is. You don't have to have a lot of wrenches and, and uh, spend a lot of time jacking the wheels up and doing all that sort but it is important to spend the time to look at that piece of equipment. Look, raise the hood, look at the fan belts. Uh, do I have fan belts? You know, just look. That's a good idea. <laughs> I need to check that out. Right. And, and it sounds kind of silly and, and stupid and all, but um, take a moment and go through and, and do all of these things. 
you'd be surprised at uh, what you'll learn about your piece of equipment. Uh, and one of the things that I've always thought was, was just uh, kind of out of curiosity, but it, it's very interesting to me. I'd uh, worked with uh, other companies, and I got to know other drivers and different things, but we would do a pre-trip inspection on another guy's truck. In other words, and he would do a pre-trip on my truck. Oh, And yeah. because you get into a habit, and drivers are a little uh, complacent, let's say, they get used to seeing the same things over and over and over again, so they've just automatically assumed that, oh, yeah, I know what that's going to look like already. I've, I've looked at it every day for the past so many days. And it's still broke. <laughs> yeah, in some cases, <laughs> it is. It's still, it's still, I do that. It hadn't fixed itself yeah, yet. Right. <clears throat> but uh, by looking at, at another truck, you will just see the obvious. And sometimes when you look at your truck, you'll miss some of these things. So let, let's explain. Just to, Now, this is for people not truck drivers. They all know pre in, pre-trip inspection and, and what it is. But think about people that are listening to this podcast that maybe mm-hmm. their families or relatives or somebody that's not a truck driver. Right. Tell them what a pre-trip inspection is. Well, uh, again, that's that visual inspection just to make sure that everything's good. You don't have any flat tires. You want to make sure that all your lights are working. And that's not just so that you can see where you're going, but that's so that other motorists can see you. So your tail lights, your brake lights, uh, anything like that. Uh, your windshields are clean. Your mirrors are adjusted. Uh, in other words, you can actually get in the truck and go down the highway without having to compensate for uh, your your mirror being gone or something. And so, uh, simple just, things like that. You know, a person driving every day like me doesn't, you know, when my washer fluid runs out, that's when I fill it up. <laughs> well, on a truck driver, that's one of the DOT requirements. That's what they look for. It is. That that has to have fluid in it. That's well, right. you know, anybody else driving a car is not going to, I'm not going to check that. No. You know, I'm no. going to fill it up when it runs out. That's just one of an, an example of the simple things that a truck driver's got to check the Absolutely. washer fluid and make sure it's got it in there every day. Right. Flat tires and, and do my lights work? Do my windshield wipers work? You know, we take it for granted a lot of times. We'll, we may go, uh, drivers may go for days without using the windshield wipers, and then it starts raining, so they just automatically hit the switch and expect that windshield wiper to start working. And most of the time it does. But did he check that to see that it's going to work when he needs it to work? Mm. And, uh, ahead of time and little simple things too that drivers can do just like a brake test they say well man I haven't had any brake any problems with my brakes for a long time so why do I need to check them well it could be that you just developed some problems I always had a habit of when I would put it in gear and get ready to leave the truck stop or somewhere I would just break it loose, let it roll just a little bit, and then put my foot on the brake just to make sure that these brakes are working before I get out there to the traffic light, and then I have to depend upon the brakes to work. All right. So just to make sure that that truck and that piece of equipment's in good condition before I get out on the highway. Is there like a, uh, I mean, it, is, it, do they, is there an actual list that drivers are supposed to go by to check that or is this just more of a common sense okay i know what the laws are i know what i can get written up for i'll just i'll do a walk around and check that stuff or is there actually a list that i need to go through every morning Mm -hmm. before i fire this truck up well as far as a federal required list no there's not okay uh, of course there's a lot of the companies and uh, the uh, trucking associations that have developed a list for drivers and it's uh, it's pretty common sense stuff but uh, but it's required to log it oh yeah absolutely yes that's part of your work you're actually working i know a lot of times drivers think well i'm not driving down the highway so i'm not working but you are you're at work that's part of your job but um, uh, as far as the code, uh, the CFRs, the Code of Federal Regulations goes, all of that is listed in there. Uh, it's not necessarily listed as 
here's what you need to do on a pre-trip inspection, but it is listed all the specifications. Windshield wipers must work. Right. <laughs> Tires must be inflated. Yeah. Your lights must be working and, and those kinds of things. But uh, the driver can develop his own uh, habit, you might say, his own uh, routine. Um, a lot of times it's standard to always get out of the truck and raise the hood before you crank the engine up. Raise the hood up, look at it, check the oil, check your fluids, look at your fan belts, look at your steering mechanism, look at your brakes while you got the hood over. Uh, look for leaks, what's down there on the ground with the hood tilted over. You can see the ground a whole lot easier now. Uh, wh what kind of problems is under there? Do I need to add fluids of some sort? Yeah, you can tell all that with, right. the, with the hood open before you even crank it, and you know your fluids are, are level because you've been sitting all night. So right, you right. know you're good that before you crank it up and Everything. walking around. I, I enjoyed listening to uh, Vic this morning when we were visiting with him. Mm -hmm. uh, just so you guys know, Vic Beta, the owner-operator of ours, I said earlier, well, me and Randy had a conversation with him about pre-trip inspections, one of his opinion mm -hmm. on things. And he, he, you know what, what I got out of him was he's always looking. Yes. He's one of those guys always, he said, I'm always looking. Mm -hmm. It's not just a pre-trip inspection that I'm doing in the morning. I do that when I get up. But he said, I'm always looking, whether I'm getting loaded and I'm walking around, I'm looking at things, I mean, tires, air hoses, trailers. Uh, he's looking at everything to find anything unusual. Uh, absolutely. <clears throat> you never know. And that's what I was talking about earlier. When you do those pre-trip inspections and you look at your piece of equipment every day, it's easy to see the same things, you know. But if you're out there and you're going to have to wait a little while to get loaded or something, it's a good, warm, sunshiny day, get out of that truck and walk around and just look at it. Simple as that. Cracks in the frame or, or in some part of the structure or something that you normally wouldn't look at. Well, I just got my truck washed last night, so everything's good and clean, so I should be able to see anything that's, that might be a problem. I, I just want to know what's going on. I'm curious, you know. Yeah. I want to know what my house looks like. And that's a good point of being clean because a whole lot easier to tell. Absolutely. You know, when you got a good, clean equipment and you can see a lot of different things, you know. That's right. It'll, it'll show up. Yeah, it'll show up. Sure will. But a good, um, uh, a good routine is very helpful for that driver. But checking under the hood, then to walk around, look at the tires, lights, you know, and um, – like Vic was talking about, some of these newer trucks, they've actually got a program in there to help the driver to do those lights and brakes and stuff. And, and anything like that, any kind of technology, uh, the crossfires uh, that he was talking about. Yeah, I thought that the, was interesting. I mean, I'm... For the tire pressures? I'm, I'm sure everybody knows about that, but I'm I'm not a truck driver, so I don't know about that that crossfire with the, right. does the tire pressure. and You don't have to actually check the pressure in every tire. It tells you whether it's... right. Low yes. or high? Exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, and that's that's not just to avoid getting written up by the DOT. Uh, the better the job that the driver does of keeping that tire pressure at the correct pressure, the longer those tires are going to last. He's going to get more money out of those same tires, yeah. more wear and tear, uh, get, get better use out of his money. He's going to be more efficient. He's going to be a better driver. The old standard way, the old-fashioned way of checking them with the air gauge, that still works. But a lot of times drivers are like, well, man, I'm sitting out here in this muddy lot, and I don't really want to get down on my knees in the mud. But yeah. technology like that that we can just visually look and see what our tire pressure is, if it's good, bad, or if it's somewhere in between. Uh, I've never used crossfires on my trucks, but uh, it sounds like it's a pretty good idea. Yeah, and I'll tell you something else. Uh, you know, he just bought a brand new Mac mm -hmm. Anthem truck, and he's just first day here with it. Uh, you know, he traded, and he was telling me, or he was telling us about um, what was that assist? Oh, pre trip assist, right? That yes. that truck comes with because mm -hmm. y'all were talking about uh, holding the brake pedal down, right. see if you got brake lights. Yes, but this this uh, pre trip assist that comes mm -hmm. with this truck does it for you. 
Yes, That's modern pretty, technology man, right there. Look at yeah. How long did it take you, to figure that out? <laughs> you don't have to have a broomstick, broomstick. no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get somebody to go push on that brake while that, I see if they work back here. That's right. That's right. So the, the technology is out there if these guys will use it. But, um, uh, again, it goes back to just to make sure that that piece of equipment's in good condition. One of the other things that comes into play along with this is when a driver sees that something needs to be fixed, uh, don't get back in the truck and keep on trucking thinking, well, uh, this weekend when I get home, that'll be fixed by that time. It'll, it'll have fixed itself by then. I don't think they're that far advanced in technology that these trucks will fix themselves. Well, I wish they would be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure a lot, a lot of people <laughs> wish that they would. But um, you can see that an oil seal that's just beginning to seep a little bit, it's not going to get any better. It's just going to continue to get worse and worse. So uh, fix it right away. Fix it as soon as you see it. Lights, um, if you look at it this morning, and the, the light's not working, when you look at it tonight, it's not going to be fixed. <laughs> it's not going to work tonight. <laughs> well, you hope something knocked it back into place <laughs> during the day and it starts working uh, again. I know, I know. And, and I, I hate to be silly about those kinds of things, but uh, – well, the, proca- proca- I'm sorry, procrastination is, is right. I mean, we're, it's in us. Yes. Especially men, you know, we just procrastinate all the time and yeah, wait exactly. till it gets here. You know, you, you, you know something's wrong, you see it, and wait till this weekend, it's starting mm-hmm. to leak, or I got a light out, or I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not mechanically inclined, I got a man that does this every mm-hmm. weekend, every two weeks, three weeks, when I go home, he goes through it. Mm-hmm. What happens if you get caught? Mm. Ooh, that's going to be expensive then and time-consuming. The other thing that, that you mentioned about uh, waiting until I get home or something like that, uh, when you do see things like that that need to be fixed, don't make a mental list of it. I assure you, you're going to forget it. Get you a pencil and piece of paper and write it down. And that's the only way that you're going to keep track of it. That's a very good point. I have to do that myself. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> Make you a to-do list just for the truck. You know, just things that need to be looked at, need to be think, uh, looked after later on. But as far as the expenses of uh, fixing it, uh, if I can find out something that's wrong with my truck, I can fix it and get that taken care of and corrected before the officer finds out about it, then I've saved myself a whole lot of time and trouble and and CSA points for me and and for Oakley both. If I can get that uh, and beat him at his own game, so to speak. What's some of the common things that they look for, a DOT officer, when you roll through a way station or pulled over? What's what's some of the – common things that you see and mm-hmm. on the safety side guys getting written up for the three top number one <clears throat> thing is tires you've got tires number two is lights and the third one is brakes those are the three things that uh, oakley gets written up for and for general purposes almost all trucks get written up for those uh, but it's the tires is the number one problem don't measure don't take the time to look at it. Uh, you've ran over a nail or a piece of metal or something. You didn't realize it that you did, but then when you get up on the scales now, the officer finds out that you did run over a piece of wire or nail, and now you got a flat tire. Man, well, I wished I'd have known that before. Sometimes those things, it, it's no way for the driver to find out about it because it, it happened while he was moving. All right. But at the same time, the, the drivers that uh, spend five or six hours in that seat, they could have stopped somewhere for a 15 or 30 minute break uh, in there and, and only driven for a couple of three hours. Take that break, look at that piece of equipment, check it. Maybe they would get lucky and they might even find a, a piece of metal in a tire in a, in a short break like that. So they might possibly be able to avoid it. The other part about that is if the officer finds it, chances are really, really good. Almost all of our drivers that get written up for tire problems, almost all of them, 
get placed out of service also. Really? Yes. So they're not going to go anywhere until they get it fixed. Well, now there's a, a time issue there that goes on. It takes time to get a service truck out there to the scales or somewhere. The expense of getting it fixed on the road, you don't get a choice. You can't shop around and find a tire. You just have to buy whatever you can whatever get your hands got, on. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's very expensive. <clears throat> the other part that's expensive is your CSA points. Uh, flat tires, eight points because they were placed out of service as an additional two points. So now you're looking at 10 points for a flat tire when you're placed out of service. Multiply it times three. Three, that's 30, yeah. So you wind up with 30 points. And, and for for you listeners that hadn't listened to some of our podcasts in the past, we are – Oakley Trucking pays you based on your CSA score with Oakley Trucking. Yes, so that zero points that you have on your CSA score, which gets you 25 cents a mile. Loaded and empty. That's correct. Loaded and empty miles. You went from 25 cents. Now with this flat tire, you've gone to 19 cents. Yep. So it's six cents a mile. You say, well, that, that's not so bad. That, that don't sound so bad. Well, let's you say, add that up. Let's say they exactly do the math. It, six cents a mile. If you run a hundred thousand pay miles here at Oakley, that's six thousand dollars for a flat tire. Yep. Man, I wish I'd have stopped and checked that tire. Oh, I wish I'd kept a little closer eye on those tires. Pre-trip inspections are just—they are not going to prevent everything, mm-hmm. but they. <laughs> It's got to become a habit for every truck driver to do and do it thoroughly. You yes. know, <clears throat> I could tell talking to Vic this morning, he was passionate about oh. his stuff being top notch, which I think most of our guys are. You know, I asked him, does he he see many other people doing pre trips? And he did. He said, I don't think many people do them at all. Mm-hmm. You know, he mm-hmm. said, uh, he looks all the time, but. I don't think he was talking about our guys, but never, right. you know. Nevertheless, uh, I, I think a lot of people don't do pre-trips, and it's something that uh, you know you can get spoiled. Mm-hmm. You just get in and go. Yeah. I mean, it, my wife gets in her car and she goes, right? And if it don't work, she calls me and go, "Hey, this thing ain't working right." <laughs> well, you know yes. that, honey. That light comes on because you're about out of gas. That's right. That's right. I- I don't know. I just keep driving, and I think my <laughs> gas gauge is broke because it keeps going to that E mark all the I'm time. Not say, I'm not <laughs> saying that about my wife. I don't want her to listen to that because that's, that's not her. It makes you, but it, it's, it's I'm that way. You know, I mean, I, I things. I got you got bells and buzzers going on these trucks these days. It's supposed mm-hmm. to tell you if something's wrong. Right. Well, at that point, it's too late. Yeah, yeah. That's why it's called pre. I'm, I'm in trouble if, when it when the bell goes off. Right. I'm in trouble. Yeah. So that's too late. <laughs> pre-trip on these trucks i i just exactly uh, that's you know and then you think you put it in perspective i mean it's a it's a huge piece of equipment mm-hmm. tractor trailer grossing 79 80 000 pounds going down the road mm-hmm. i mean you cannot afford to have uh, an accident happen with you know whether it's a bad tire mm-hmm. that explodes on you or the truck breaks down on you or the trailer has issues and you shouldn't unload or you shouldn't load it I mean, there's all kinds of examples, and I, I just wanted to to visit with you on this pre-trip to emphasize more and more to our mm-hmm. owner-operators and anybody listening uh, how important a pre-trip inspection is, I guess, along with post-trip too, Randy. Yeah, absolutely, yes. <clears throat> and I hear that comment an awful lot. Well, I looked at my truck last night when I went to bed. Everything was all good, so why do I need to do it again today, this morning? I haven't moved anywhere. I haven't gone anywhere. I it ought to be the same and i think that's that procrastination stuff Uh, we just take it for granted hey if it ain't broke doesn't need fixing but if i don't take the time to look at it and visually inspect it i won't ever know that it's broke so you get up in the morning you didn't bump your tires you didn't check your lights or something a little ways down the road now you're getting stopped or you're having problems because you got a flat tire uh you don't your brake lights are not working Whatever the reason is, if you'd have checked it that morning before you left, 
you might could have avoided all those problems. Yeah. It is probably the most important thing that you can do uh, to keep that piece of equipment continually working and making money for you is your uh, preventative maintenance or your pre-trip inspection yeah. is going to tell you a whole lot about that equipment if you'll just simply take the time to do it. Good stuff. Good important information that uh, everybody needs to hear. You know, you're driving a truck. That's uh, that's pre-trip stuff is important. If you guys out there listening has got suggestions too, you want us to share with everybody, we'd be glad to. But I hope this uh, conversation with pre-trip inspections was good for everybody listening. Randy, do you have anything else you wanted to add, or is that good? Oh, I've got a long list of things, and it just goes into a lot of details about, again, I go back to that routine you know, raise the hood, look everything under over there, check your fifth wheel, just make sure. When was the last time you looked at your fifth wheel? Get up underneath there and look at it, make sure everything is all good. Look for fuel leaks and problems like that. Uh, one of the other things that a lot of the associations will include in a pre-trip is your paperwork, your permit book. Do you know where your uh, trailer registration, your truck registration, all your permits and everything, do you know is, is all that in order? Do you know where it's at? Can you get your hands on it? Organized. Exactly. Uh, some of those things like that that can be thrown in there, but uh, it's um, it's just getting a good routine and, and then uh, taking the time to do it. Yeah, taking that extra 10 minutes. Right, right. Do that walk around. Yes. And sometimes you get up, man, it's pouring down rain or something. Do the best that you can, and then maybe uh, later on in the day you get to a place where the weather's a little better. Well, go over that truck again the second time that day. Yeah. Just in case you missed something when you was in a little bit of a hurry that morning because it was pouring rain. It could sure save you down the road. Absolutely. Always keep constantly monitor that piece of equipment. I feel like we got some pretty good owner-operators that do that, don't you? Yes, we do. Uh, and I think that shows up in their CSA scores because there is a bunch of owner-operators here that have zero points on their CSA scores. Yeah, yeah. they're taking care of their equipment. They're taking care of our trailer. Yes. And Vic's a good example. We yeah. talked about this morning. He uh, he hardly ever gets written up for anything. Yeah. Very rare. Oh, you can tell by talking to him. He's passionate about, mm -hmm. you know, Yes. Making sure his stuff's right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and pre-trip and in preventive maintenance. So Yes. And it's all about the money because if he does a good job of taking care of that piece of equipment, it's going to be up and running and making money for him. That's how he can roll in here today with that 2021 Mac That's right. truck. That's right. Looking good. So. Yes. Pays its dividends, doesn't it? Kind of like that old story about uh, the old farmer talks about if you'll watch the pennies, the dollars takes care of themselves. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. That's a good one. I hadn't heard that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how about this retiring uh, issue I've been hearing oh, about yes. for a while? What's oh, up with that? Oh, yeah, man. That's uh, – I mean, you're not but, what, 39, 40 years? And a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well – uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, just had a birthday on the 2nd of January, turned 65 years old, and I thought, well, it's about time for me to just step aside and let somebody else take over. Let somebody else do this for a while. I know uh, there's two or three here that are very capable, and um, maybe, yeah, maybe they don't have that experience right yet, but I think they're working toward it, and, and they're young and, and uh, energetic, they're interested in trucking, and I believe they'll do a good job. Yeah, I think so, too. We've got some great people over in the safety department. It's uh, it's going to be a major loss to lose you. I know that. Mm -hmm. It's tough. Uh, well, what are you going to do? Um, well, I've thought long and hard, and i made a lot of plans, and I think uh, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you, t <laughs> you worked hard on that I one, did, didn't you? I did. I did. Uh, <laughs> no. Um, How long you worked? Uh, well, since I was about 14, I had to get a Social Security number when I was 14 in order to get a job to uh, clean up the classrooms after school when I was in junior high. So I have had a, a social, been working ever since, so about 51 years. How long in trucking? Uh, started in 77, 1977, and for the first 10 years, I guess, 
uh, drove truck for somebody else for the first two or three years, uh, spent a lot of time from home, of course, and uh, decided, had a young family, decided, well, I need to spend a little more time at home. So we lived in a very rural area. Jobs were hard to come by. Um, and, and I just found out it was such a struggle. So go back to driving a truck and uh, do that for another two or three years. And I think, well, now another opportunity's come by and spend more time at home. And, yeah. And it did, and it lasted for a year or so, and I'd go back to driving truck again. <laughs> but uh, trucking has been very good to me. Um, I've, I've always, it's something that I can do, something I've enjoyed doing. Lots and lots of good people in the trucking industry. Yeah. It's not the easiest job in the world, um, but there has always been a great demand for good people. So if you're willing to, to work and, and try, put some effort into what you do, and kind of makes me think about the old story that uh, you only get out of it what you put into it. Yep. So uh, if, if you're willing to put that effort into it, uh, trucking industry is going to be a good return to you. It's been good to me. Well, that's great to hear. We, uh, we hate to lose you here at Oakley. I know we've told you that several times and tried to keep you around yeah. here a little bit. We'll yeah. Keep that door open for a little while. We'll, we'll let you think about well. it a while just in case. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Benny, he told me, he said the other day, he said, well, come back and see us sometime. And after I thought about it for a few minutes, I decided, you know, I, I better not show up anytime soon because he'll just put me back to work will. again. So, <laughs> so I might wait a little while before I show up again. <laughs> well, it's good that, that you had not got anything planned. You're going to relax, enjoy time with your wife at the house, and I'm sure you got plenty to tinker oh, with yeah, there, there and stay busy. Yeah, I've got a shop of my own, and I like to fool with some old farm equipment, old tractors and cars and pickups, so I'll I'll be able to stay busy, uh, at least for a while. For a while. <laughs> Get trucking to be out of sight, out of mind for a little while, so. Uh, Well, yeah, for a little while. I've got some good friends of mine that's still in the trucking business there uh, around the house. Um, so I, I might be able to help them a little bit sometime. Can't ever get it out of your system, uh, can you? No, uh, no, not completely. Maybe, well, yeah. maybe for a little while. Well, it's been great working with you. I can tell you, uh, you know, you worked here what twelve years? Uh, 12, soon be thirteen. Thirteen years, and um, I've learned a lot from you. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate you being patient with, with oh, me and you. recruiting. And I've learned a lot just by watching you and listening to you and. We've had some good talks and sure have uh, some good church talks. Yes, and some, we, we that's get right. uh, we've had some good uh, good times over here at Oakley. So it's sure been fun, have. and we're gonna miss you around here for sure, this, man. This is a great family. I know we uh, hear a lot of that gets thrown around from time to time about this trucking company or that trucking company and the family, but uh, Oakley is one of the places where that really holds true. This truly is a a family here at Oakley. It yeah. really is. Well, I appreciate that, and you are part of the family, mm -hmm. whether you're here or not. <laughs> but we're going to try to get as much as we can out of you today, the you last will. day. <laughs> I know you will. <laughs> Thought you was getting out of here early, I didn't know. you? Roger's already threatened me a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, good to, good to uh, visit with you. I appreciate you doing this podcast with me to keep our owner-operators up to date and informed on what's going on. One other thing I'd like to add, too, is um, – me and you've worked with him a long time as Mac Holloman uh, mm -hmm. has retired too after yes. what 31 years uh, I think he's been with us and uh, we sure hate to see him go he, yeah. is, he is he is just a, a, a statement here at Oakley Trucking that's been here longer than I've been here he trained me to dispatch when mm -hmm. I first started back in the 90s and uh He'll sort of be missed, too, yeah, around absolutely. here. Absolutely. No, Mac, he's a good one now. He is a good one. So, sure All right. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to the Oakley Podcast. We appreciate all your input, and we are looking forward to some great ones coming out uh, this year. Every Wednesday, we have a new one drop, so be sure and, and listen to them and spread the word. Spread the word at Oakley Trucking. And if you're interested in leasing on with Oakley Trucking, be sure and give us a call. Uh, here at the office, 800-662-0875, and we'll visit with you and talk to you about the company. Uh, Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next week.